you really want to know what makes it go, what takes it high or sends it low down, well, you can work it out if you just learn about the way things work. If you really want to know how it can ride or bump and jump or glide and slide, you ought to take a little look inside the way things work and watch the thing that bump that turns the knob that makes the jigger jig that turns the thing in me jig that pulls the trigger that makes the digger dig if you really want to know how it can fly without a wing or string to tie with you find the same simple rules apply with the way things work better tie him up here frank don't want him wandering all over the place uh, at least there's plenty of rope so he can get to the water trough if he's thirsty. Good. Because nothing's worse than a dehydrated mammoth. Well, anyway, if he frees himself, he won't go very far. How much do you bet? Come on, you two! We haven't got all day! Brenda had very kindly agreed to help run the Mammoth Island awning factory whilst its owner was away on a late summer vacation. Unfortunately, everything was behind schedule and there were lots of awnings to deliver, so she asked Frank and Pilbeam to help. Better get this onto him then. Steady, old boy. It's not heavy. Just a little awkward. That won't do. He can't see properly. That's a bit better, isn't it? As long as we don't have to go through any narrow entrances. Haven't you two forgotten something? What's that, Brenda? All that paperwork you need to sign before you deliver anything. Can't see why we have to fill in quite so many forms just to deliver one awning. They call that modernisation, part of the elimination of inefficiency. More like the elimination of forests, with all those trees they have to cut down to make all that paper. <laughs> He's run away! No! This can't be true! Well, I don't want to believe it. I thought mammoths couldn't fly. I understand. Yeah, when the wind blew, the mammoth flew. And when the wind dropped, the mammoth plopped into the pond. The strong gust of wind had turned the mammoth and the awning into a kite. A kite can only fly when there is enough wind. Then its string holds it so that it deflects the wind downwards. The wind provides the force for the flight. It exerts a reaction that balances the pull of the string and the weight of the kite to support the kite in the air. What have you two been doing to that poor mama? Yeah, it's all wet and miserable. We were trying to deliver an awning. And the mammoth sort of took off. And then came down again. Splash! <laughs> you mean it was flying? What a great way to deliver things. Hey! What have you done to that awning? The mammoth had a bit of an accident and it got all wet. That's why it's soggy and warped. Well, next time, you make sure that you wrap it up good and tight so as to keep it dry. Brenda, without realising it, had come up with a great idea. If the awning were wrapped up too tight, it would become curved so that the exterior would look rather like this shape, which we call an aerofoil. When flying, the air passing above the wing has further to travel than the air passing beneath. Ha! 
This lowers the air pressure above the wing, which forces it upwards. The force is called lift. That's got a bit of a curve, hasn't it? You must have wrapped it up too tight. Rather it was wrapped up too tight than get all wet and warped again. Uh, steady on, old thing. Gently does it. There you are. You'll be able to see where you're going with these. That'll stop your eyes watering when you go fast. Look out! He's taking off! Don't worry, he's still attached to the rope. He can't go far. He can now. We're going to lose our mammoth! No! Look, he's coming back! Flying all by himself? Come on! Good boy! Come back here and have a nice snack! Oh, there's a good boy then. The mammoth had flown like a glider, which is the simplest kind of winged aircraft. It's pulled along the ground until it's moving fast enough for the lift generated by the wings to exceed its weight. The glider then rises into the air and flies. After release from its tow rope, the glider continues to move forward as it drops slowly, pulled by a thrust force due to gravity. Friction with the air produces a force called drag that acts to hold the glider back. These two pairs of opposing forces, lift and weight, thrust and drag, act on all aircraft. Pillbeam! Frank! What's that mammoth of yours doing on top of my pile of awning material? It was around this time that I began to take a profound interest in the progress of mammoth flight and the islander's ingenious approach to it. Come on, you can do it. Just give it another try, now that you're rested. We'll soon have you airborne, old thing. OK, Troy, it's time to pedal. <laughs> However fast the mammoth ran, he could not take off. So... You had better have these. You've deserved them. <laughs> Everyone decided that the best way for the mammoth to get airborne must be to provide it with wheels and use some form of on-board propulsion. With those skates on, he'll zoom down the runway. What? Are you going to push him or something? No. I've got a much better idea. Trunk power. What's that? I'll show you. Come on, everybody. Gather round. Now. What you've all got to do is take deep breaths with your mouth and blow the air out of your nose as hard as you can. Olive, are you out of your mind or something? No, Auntie Brenda. Just please do as I ask. Trust me, now all we need is some direction. Dad, Pillbeam, get him to point his trunk backwards. Brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. In, out, in, out, in, out. G good boy. Keep it up. In, out, in, out. <laughs> oh. 
But however hard he tried, the mammoth's breath was never going to accelerate him to the speed at which he would soar into the air. There was just not enough lift. What a shame. It had seemed such a brilliant idea. The islanders, as ever, would not give up. They were most resourceful. What we need is something that will push the mammoth up into the air. We haven't got much time. All the deliveries are terribly late. We'll need something strong and powerful, won't we? In the end, I had to stop the islanders from putting a huge jet on the mammoth's back. As the whole idea was far too dangerous, and the poor mammoth could have come to great harm as there was no way to control his flight. At that moment, the owner of the factory returned from his holiday. As soon as he heard about the islanders' experiments, he gave up worrying about ordering deliveries and went into the aircraft industry. The aircraft he built was controlled by this control column and these pedals. Pull the column back, you see, and the elevators on the tail deflect the airflow so that the tail drops and the nose rises, so the aircraft climbs. Conversely, you push the column forwards and the airflow makes the tail rise and the nose drop and the aircraft dives. Press the pedals to one side and the rudder deflects the airflow, causing the aircraft to turn. Whilst doing this, it is necessary to push the column to the side to roll the aircraft so that it turns smoothly. Oh, I'm so excited! I've never been on an overseas holiday before. How could you afford all this, Mum? That kind man who owned the awning factory gave the tickets to me. He said it was a thank you for some ideas we gave him. That's nice, Brenda. One thing's worrying me, though. What's that, Bilby? I'm oh, missing our mammoth already. I wonder how he is. If it wasn't for you, I'd still be making awnings. 